so you've downloaded all required you game db you lobby you link anything you want and want to start developing your game we'll use the previous created scene and always just first open the main master project not the you collab one and then open the ucolab project open ucolab if you are not sure if anything is really in sync or not you can re-import the project because maybe you've closed the second project before really finishing work on the first one or the syncing is stopped last time so they are being synced again most of the time, you should have one server scene and one client scene. In server, we've attached the simple server script to a game object. I'll talk about the server manager script later on, but this one just has the port that server starts in, number of players, and a frame rate of the server because the frame rate need to be locked because we run Unity in batch mode without any graphics, and we don't want to go it to go wild and eat all of the CPU and cleaning objects when disconnecting means if a client disconnects you link will destroy all of its game objects and our PCs and other stuff so really simple and the only important thing here for the moment is this game type thing which is the type of the game that we register our game with master server using it. Master server is our server this thing without using ULobby actually. Inside the client scene we have the utility script gotten from here. You link utility scripts, client GUI. Again here we just set the type, set the default IPM port for the default server, which we can name its button here and the other stuff aren't important the only other thing is in new link menu and in edit settings you just can actually choose to have either an authoritative server or not which there's a tick here by default it doesn't have tick is not checked so you should check it here if you want a server which has authority and by that i mean all of your logic is executed on the server and the server doesn't allow many of the cheats for example doesn't allow clients to send the state sync to other clients and forces it on them to send their state sync to server and then server can broadcast their state sync result if accepted to others to run the game you simply choose the server scene in one of the projects Client in the other, then run both. Server will register itself in the master server and logs that it's run successfully. In client, you have this GUI. You can actually push default server to connect to a default one or press advanced. And here from the master server, you can see the listed servers and join one of them. So now our servers are connected to our clients. So now that we have a server and the client should be able to instantiate game objects on client and server to start playing. For that, at first we should create some ground. So. Got a point light really, a directional one, and also a plane. With a maybe a little bigger scales for the plane.
and it's a good idea to copy these over to the other scene now we had something which we needed to set up here and by something I mean the transforms that we want to place objects on top of so let's reduce number of players to 3 for now and say let's have 3 transforms for them name them 1 2 and 3 Let's put them at three positions. Now we should and can instantiate our game objects. The important concept is that when you have a network game in Ulink, you have three different object roles. So when you want to create prefabs, you should create three prefabs in your resources folder or you should register them. I'll choose register folder for now, resources folder for now. Uh, you need one prefab for the game object that will be instantiated on the server for your object. For example, the character which called creator role or server role in new version and then you need a prefab for the game object created for the character in the client owning it called the owner role and one proxy prefab to be instantiated in all other clients other than the owner for example if you want to instantiate a soldier for all clients you should have one owner soldier one server soldier and one proxy and you can read more about these object roles in your link manual for sure. For now, just let me instantiate them. And what is better to be used is capsules, I think. And we can attach the smooth character to it. So we want to make a prefab, so let's drag it here. And delete that one. We need three of these, so duplicate, duplicate. And let's name them like here, at server. And then You can have really different prefabs and it's one of the most powerful concepts in Ulink. So you can attach different scripts to all prefabs, you can have different stuff in them and then in the server manager script that I will show you, we'll attach them to this avatar, owner, creator and proxy. So let's put these transforms in their places and this one and the last one maybe should be here as well so we can have three different ones and now for the avatars
owner and then proxy and then the server run good so these two other parameters are for the master server I said before so let's take a look at this script if you save this now and reload here this time we'll have a much different experience so we are in the server scene here I think actually this uh, unity 4 has new features which really makes the project view useless oh. we need to do a little code mod modification at first so let's just fire up this Visual Studio thing. Now let's see what's in my script basically. Server manager. Okay. So these are your link network view objects for the owner creator and proxy and list of transform normal stuff. This script can be downloaded from the website. In a way, I'll just set up the game type by game name of the master server and set the manager singleton instance and player connected will be called when a player connects to a server so first i'll check if there is any item in the transform list and if no i'll put an error otherwise i'll choose one of those transforms and will call the network that instantiate method of ulink this p variable is the player who is connected which its name is passed here so I'll create a him and send a proxy and owner and creator and we need to use their name if they are in resources folder but you can we can put them outside of resources folder and then register them using the ulink register prefab component but for the ease of use, I chose to do it like this. And now I have an error. So, what could be the problem as it says? And not implicitly convert type unity and the game object to your link. It works for you. So, mm. it seems that this version, which uses names, is not what we can use at least with this script at this time. So, let's delete these names. So now after insta instantiation, uh, I have this uninitialized server which I will register the master server and say it's a dedicated server and no client is in it. Uh, so to be able to test it, I need to actually create registry. And now I should attach this register prefab component of your link and it's really easy to use. We should register our prefabs here. You can choose all and boom. And also need it here. So
we need in both clients and server actually here we can don't register the server prefab but who cares for the moment so let's test it for now to see if it works or not and no we should be able to join and be instantiated and yes he's here on the client and on the server now if we add some code to him to move it will move both on the client and on the server and if we build we can have multiple clients running together in the next video i'll show you how to create scripts to move the character and change his color and tell about these to other players then we'll add shooting and destruction and we are done